YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, what's gone on since we had a chat last? Um, I've done a bit of machining and I've finished the TE20 Ferguson um, axle puller. The, um, it, it's all done ready to roll. I've knocked a tooth out. Well look, to tell you the truth, it, it, was, a, it was a root canal and I had it, had it done ages ago and I was heading to Brisbane to see nephew when he was crooking. I must have been chewing a lolly or something, my front tooth fell out and I thought, oh shit, that's no good. So um, I poked it back in and it slopped around there for a bit and I thought, oh this thing was giving me the shit. So um, I didn't get to the dentist, so where, where you have the tooth and there's a little piece of steel goes up to put in the root canal, I got my pliers and give that a bend and poked it up in there and, and that kept it tight for ages. Yeah, just the spring tension, alright. So anyway, I, I told my missus, I said, I'm going to super glue that bloody thing in. And she said, oh, you don't do that. You don't put super glue in your mouth. It might poison you. And, and um, anyway, one day, <laughs> one day it fell out again. And I thought, up this. So I, I had some super glue at work on the, on the shelf for sale. So I put a bit of super glue up the hole and poked my tooth in and settled it all in, bedded it in and lasted for months and months and months. And anyway, I've, I've done that a couple of times over the last few years instead of going to the dentist. But it was six and a half thousand when I got it done. But um, so at the moment I still have my tooth, it's sitting in the console of the car. I haven't got it back in yet. Um, I'll probably just glue it back in. Yeah, <laughs> when I get to work tomorrow I'll, um, I'll pop a bit of super glue on and put my tooth back in. And I'll be flash then, eh? Flash is a rat with a gold tooth, yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, things you do. But anyway, Mrs. isn't real fussed about that. But she's saying, oh yeah, you should go to the dentist and should do this and should do that. And um, but anyway, you know what it's like. We don't always do what we're told, do we? Probably don't often when you think of it, but anyway, we're alright. But look, last time I was talking to you, I was going to Mergen. Um, I was going out to Wandai to um, the nephew's daughter's christening, and we've been there, done that, and um, yeah, we caught up with our friends Mick and Margaret on the Friday, on the Saturday night, I'm sorry, and um, oh, we had a few beers, and not too many, only a dozen or so, and um, and yeah, we used to, when the kids were little, our neighbours when the kids were little, and um, we were both busted ass. Didn't have, didn't have two bob to scratch together between us, but if, if either Mick or myself did some work for somebody, and um, someone gave us a cart and a beer, well, the first thing we'd do is ring up, I'd ring up Mick, or Mick would ring up me and say, hey, so-and-so dropped us in a cart and a beer, because we couldn't afford to buy a beer. Yeah, we, um, it was a real treat for us, and... and um, so we'd ring each other up if we had a if someone gave us a cart and a beer and the girls would get on the phone and say well let's have a barbie i've got a tomato and a bread roll and some sausages and whatever and judy make nice wrist holes and and um yeah well we had great fun our kids were the same ages mick and i would sit there and drink a cart and a beer and buddy and just have a ball and um we'd play canasta play cards and um the kids would play until they dropped <laughs> we'd let them run around madly and Oh, they'd sleep like beauties the next day. And, um, but anyway, Mick and Margaret are lifelong friends, family friends. And um, Mick owns an engineering business out at Mergen. And they do, they build silos and they do a lot of stuff for the feed mills, you know, for the, um, um, for the piggeries and things like that, you know, um, fit out sow stalls and all, all that sort of engineering. In engineering more to do with agriculture than mining or anything like that. So. So anyway, Mick, um, Mick and myself, we had, oh well, plenty. <laughs> and, um, once we finished the beer, we went onto the rum cans and um, played canasta till the wee hours, oh, well, till the late hours. And then um, and the next day we hopped up early and went to church and went to the christening. And I must make them bloody good churches out that way because, yeah, I, was, I haven't been in one for years, you know, and I was a bit worried about the roof caving in. But no, nah, they're all good. They, she's a solid old thing. But I noticed just for people like me, when, when they build the, build the peak of the church, you, you go in and there's a big peak there, but they've got these big steel bars going across to hold the trusses together. So I, I reckon that's what that's about. Yeah, when those bloody Philistines turn up and poke into a church, yeah, but it might not be that, but, you know, it probably is, eh? And um, so, yeah, look, we went to the christening and, um, yeah, then we went back to their place and, and had a, something to eat and a, and a chat and... Caught up with some of the relatives that we hadn't seen in a long time and um, and headed home. So it was a great weekend. And yeah, it went all too quickly, but that's how, that's how it goes. All the good ones go fast. And um, 
But in Mick's engineering business, he's got a lathe at home and he does some work at home with a lathe and a mill. In his engineering business, he has the same gear. So um, he, he handed me some of these, a beer carton with a heap of these in. You know, they're off cuts for some shafting and that they've been using. And they have to cut that off and I'll tell you how long they are because I don't know. Eighty mil. Eighty millimetres long, one inch shaft, and they've been parted off. And I think they've got a I think he said it was a metric thread down the bottom end. And so he gave me 18 of them in a, in a little bundle in a beer cart and he said, yeah, take them with you. And he had more of them lying around the floor, so I said, oh, well, any of you know when you have a lathe or milling machine or something like that, a, a little bit of round stock, doesn't matter how long or short or whatever, um, well, it's handy to have. But, um, so yeah, I expect everything that gets built in the shed, in Bundy Bear's shed for a little while, it needs a little short leg, they'll probably be 80 millimetres long, I'd reckon. But um, I was playing with the idea of, um, years ago, and I, I haven't shown you that, um, I made a ball turning attachment um, for my lathe, so yeah, we could do gear stick balls, and, and uh, what it was, was a, a carbide tip tool that I made, I think I found a plan on the net somewhere, and you can make a gear knob, or something like that for my old vintage tractors, or a, a knob for the lathe, and in reality I should be making some lathe ones, um, on my Hafco lathe here they've got plastic screw on knobs, and um, yeah, the plastic's a bit junky. They they crack and things like that. So um, so anyway, we'll <laughs> we'll make stuff out of this and have a bit of a play. So um, and I remember years ago when we used to go to the mix place at the engineering works. He let me go out the back and where the scrap pile was. He says, "Go on, have a, see what you can find in there." And um, yeah, I'd go home with with half a bootload of, of pieces, of, you know, round off cuts where they've cut out um, to put. Um, to put augers in for feeds and things like that. I, I used to find some great stuff on mixed scrap pile, but, um, but anyway, these are, these are great. Um, for what I do in here, just buggering around in Bunny Bear's shed. That's a good thing, so. So anyway, we'll, um, what we have to do today, last stew I had a couple of pins there that I was going to make, or talking about making for a Fordson Major front axle, and we imported one to, to check the size, and see what they were but we've decided to make some ourselves so so we're going to hop into that and um, that'll be a bit of machining for the end of the stew and um, we'll go from there but um, yeah last stew we had good comment and um, yeah it was great um, I think since last stew too we got about 20 new viewers so um, poor buggers <laughs> anyway that's how it is I'm, I'm pleased to have you all along it's a, it's a great little outlet having a YouTube channel and having a bit of a chat and a bullshit on and um, but anyway stay tuned we'll um, we'll do the pins today and show you how we machine them up and um, I've got in mind of making a little jig in the milling machine here and um, the stop that we had the other day um, that I showed you the other day on the um, on the milling machine um, we made the washers for so it can sit in the tea slots on the milling machine bed um, I think I can use that and I believe I'm going to use the slots, because it's three quarter round, I'm going to use the T-nut slots in the bed of the mill to sit them in, because they gotta be true. There's no tramming it in. I haven't got the vise in there at the moment, but you don't have to tram in a vise or anything like that. You should be able to drop them in the slot and away you go. So anyway, stay tuned. We'll try and make it a bit interesting for you. Um, we'll show you making a pin. I won't show you making them all. I know I'm pretty to watch, but I'm not that bloody pretty that you want to watch that all day, eh? But um, stay tuned, we'll, we'll try and make it interesting for you. We're over at the lathe, and um, I said the other day in Kangaroo Stew about making these rear axle support pins for the early Fords and Majors. And um, where, where you have your main axle goes through, there's like an A-frame comes back and um, sits into the sump, and this is the pin that goes into the sump. And, and we've imported one of these just to see what they were like, but for the cost of them, we thought we'd make some ourselves. So I found a bit of three quarter bright bar. Um, I've got enough just to make a couple, so we'll just put a couple out there. Um, what the plan is with it is, we've just got enough hanging out there that we can get a parting tool in. So we need to chamfer the front edge 
start the parting at the back, chamfer the back edge, polish it up, and once it's parted off, we'll set up the jig and we'll take it over to the milling machine. I've probably got enough here to make perhaps two pins. I thought I had more, but the piece of round I thought was a bit of bright steel was a piece of stainless. So, um, so look, we'll, we'll get one happening, and at least that'll give us a couple to put out into the marketplace, and. Um, We'll just see how they go. They might be a good seller and they may not be. But um, if you have an old Fordson, give us a yell. Or hop on the Queensland Tractor Spares website. And um, we're sneaking little bits of Fords and stuff in there all the time. So. so anyway, just follow along. We'll polish this up and see how we go. Let's get a bit of a rid of a little bit of sand. Parting tool in. We should still be nice and straight. If we line up the end, that's real close. We've made a couple of these pins and I only had enough raw stock to do two, but that's okay, we'll, we'll get them made and, and sort it out. So, so what the setup is, is this is our, our stop, we've got a stop pin set here, so we can just, um, that, that's clamped down tight to the bed now. And what we're going to do is these, these T-slot grooves in your milling machine, they'll be, they'll be true. So what the plan is, is bring that up against the stop. We'll indicate each side of the pin so we can find a zero point in the middle and we'll zero our DRO out at that. So we can always come back to that point on our absolute. And so we'll, we'll find the center of here and then we'll actually be able to take, once we, once we know where the center is and the distance in the holes, and we'll actually drop a drill down this hole, zero the DRO, then come and drop a drill down the other hole, and that'll give us the distance exactly by the digital readout between each hole. So what the idea is, we can find the center, find the spacings of the hole, get that one out of the way, pop this one in, clamp it down, and pop the holes and drill the holes through. Get rid of that one once it's done, pop the next one in up against the stop, clamp it down and drill the holes once more. So once we have this set up, um, we take a little bit of time to set it up. Um, yeah, we should be able to knock out a couple of pins quite quickly. And then um, I'll probably go and buy a little bit more stock this week. And um, I, I, <laughs> I thought I had more, but like I said earlier, the, the bit of round I had, I've got two nice lengths of stainless that, um, yeah, just aren't for here. So what we need to do is find our zero point. So what we need to do with this fella is just take him over. Remember the little light again? You can see the little lights on. So the light comes on. We'll zero our Y axis. 
We lift him up. We turn it 180 degrees. So we're using the same part of there. Come through here. Drop him down. And come back onto the stop again. What I should probably make sure I do is make sure that this tip is down below the centre line, so the centre line is touching here. So we'll actually we'll zero this one. So as soon as the red light comes on, bang, we'll zero it once more. I've got the light sitting over this direction, that direction. So we're just trying to get the light in a different place to stop the glare that we've had earlier. So we zero our DRO. We zero the Z axis too, so when we go up, bring him over here. Drop it back down till our zero lines up again so we know we're the exact same height with that probe. There we go. We turn it 180. So we're using the same surface. Just on, we zero, well actually on our Y axis, we go half of the Y axis, so then when we come up, that tells us exactly where the centre of this piece of shaft is. So we make sure we're up against the stop, we know we're in the centre. Might just do the nut, do the quill feed on this just to get the feel for it. I'll take that handle out of the way so you don't have to look at it. I think that should be right. So yeah, there you go, that went straight down, the smallest sliver of metal come off. And that's a puffteenth, I think. That's a metric puffteenth. That's the difference between metric and imperials, one puffteenth. So we zero our DRO. Take the quill up out of the way. Come down to where we think the next hole will be. Make sure we're still up from home, which we are. You can just see the drill kicks a little bit from my angle, so still kicking a little bit. still just a that's good there I believe look at that straight in so that's 75 mil 75.205 2.96 Okay, we'll make a note of that Where's my trusty paint pen when I need it? I 
I'll just write here, but don't tell anyone, eh? Two point nine six two. So, what do we need to do now? We need to take the drill out. We need to take this out. We need to put a new piece in there. Clamp it down firm this time. Now the first hole should be in the correct position. <laughs> So we'll get a centre punch and well, I might even get a centre drill. Just to be different we'll have a centre drill. Alright, we'll drop the bed. I might actually just use the quill for a little bit of this to make it quicker. Gotta make sure that the chuck misses the clamp. That would always be good, I'd say. So we're still on zero on this axis. We're up against the stop. Ready, set, go. Speed it up a bit. And that's where we'd like our hole to go. Sorry about the noggin, I just thinking I wasn't going through. I haven't felt it. So if we just go up here, bring the bed down to zero.
when he's out too far. There we go, so we'll put our centre drill in again. We kind of had that on the flat before. Come on, who nicked me centre drill? There it is, hiding down there. Stop looking. Still on zero, and we're on zero on both axes, so. Wind the quill. just in the right spot. So what we should do, while we're still going here, is do a deburr. It's, it's quite a deep deburr. You can see on that. Back to my other hole. I think I set the flipping over all so. made one and it'll be away. So that's how we're making them. 
I'll make the next one. Um, I don't need to film each one. I need to clean this out before I put another pin in. But the um, yeah, we clean the slots, and away we go. I have a I have a special brush for that. I'm not doing my whiskers with it. I'm doing this. So. Now I've lost a little thing, fell on the floor. Alright, we'll just continue on here and I'll have a bit of a chat to you when I'm finished. Maiden, we've copied off the, the original one. And um, just a quick test to see if we're accurate with the DRO. I thought we'd sit them on the drill that we drilled through them. And I couldn't find another drill, but the, the real snug fit through is an acid brush. So look at that, that goes through. So that's great. I'm going to leave the mill set up as it is for a little while. Um, I'll buy a bit more of this steel um, and do a quick run of pins while we got it set up. And oh, I'll probably make six or half a dozen or something like that. I, I don't know how they're going to go. But these ones will get a bit of a polish up and, and I might even bead blast them and just make sure they're, they're looking presentable. And um, we'll go from there. So as for the one that we got delivered, um, that we bought just to check the size, well, Look, we're as good as that for sure. We're, we're spot on to within not very much. So um, anyway, we'll see how we go. So we're going to call that a wrap for a stew for the week. Um, look, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in every week. There's a lot of you um, sneaking in for a bit of a chat and a yarn. Um, yeah, well, we'll try and get something together for next week too. Um, look, thanks for watching once more. And please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. The more, the merrier. Um, comment put a comment down the bottom yeah i think, think we balls the whole show up let us know we don't mind um probably won't change anything but we don't mind <laughs> and, um, but yeah look make a comment hit the like button and please subscribe so thanks again and i'll catch up with you next week hey?